Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to model a few tables and some accessoires. It's basically the tables you can see in this image, this one and that one, and maybe the books, um, a plate and the lamp here. Let's start out by modeling the table. First you go to Mode, Project and set the default object color to 80% gray. Next, you choose a cylinder, call it table top, set a radius of 30 centimeters and a height of 2 centimeters. Multiply the rotation segments by 4 so we have enough detail. Go to display Goro shading lines to see the topology. Go back to display Goro shading then you notice that this edge is way too hard. That's why we go to Caps, Fillet, choose three segments with a radius of 0.2. The tabletop should be positioned in 30 centimeters height. What we now need is the foot. The foot can be created by a disc. Go to Display Goro Shading Lines give the disc an outer radius of 30 centimeters so it fits to the top and choose an inner radius of 26 maybe 27 inner radius I choose 27.5 and I use 400 rotation segments. We need this much detail in order to extrude our vertical elements here. I only go for one disk segment. Now convert the disk, call it table foot. And extrude all the polygons by 0.5 centimeters, creating caps. So the bottom side is filled as well. Now we should choose. the outer and the inner ring and the bottom ring rings as well press MS and bevel it in using three subdivisions and an offset of 0.07 is ok Zoom in closely, so now you have learned two ways of beveling primitives. One was using a conversion before, the bottom one, and the other one is parametric. So now let's go to top view, disable the tabletop, and select polygons. Choose four polygons next to the vertical line. like so. You can also use the grid to see better what are the correct polygons. Now extrude the polygons without creating caps. You can do this freestyle and now set the position to 15. Delete the polygons, select all polygons and press MH for mirroring, go to object and choose XZ.
that way we've created this structure with thin blades. The proportions are a little off. And we need to make sure that the geometry is not colliding. For that I just move the top up a little. Let's have a look whether there is a gap in between. It's not noticeable, so let's watch it from the right. Press H. And we can scale in the foot a little. So the tabletop can stay at 30 centimeters height and we will just adjust the foot. Let's render it from the side. Looks okay. Let's render it from here. Looks okay. Put both elements into a null object, which is called table low. We can also already assign two materials as a kind of dummy materials. Double click on material and say table low foot. Copy paste it and call this table low top. In case you don't like the material names being cut off, just go to Edit Material List. Now assign Table Low Foot to the foot and Table Low Top to the top. I will also give the foot a dark color. The white is okay for the table top. Close the table low and now let's go on with the lamp here. I disable the table low for now and choose another cylinder. The cylinder may have a height of 2 cm and a radius of 12. I'm going for the bottom part, which will get subdivided later on, so we can work with a rough shape. At first, I stick with 32, and the fillet is arguable. Let's just see how we do it, or and if we do it. I will just give it one more height segment, so we have two. And lift it up by 1.2, so it's slightly above the ground. You, you know, not only slightly, 0.6 would be okay. Maybe 0.8. We can adjust that later, though. Now choose some segments. I go for three in total and now I lower the rotation segments. Eight is the minimum. Now I convert the cylinder, choose the inner circle, scale it in, use I to do an inner extrusion. Let's choose D, drag it up and scale it inwards. 
we need to get the base done. Now let's, unfortunately I cannot really see the radius of this, so I will leave it the way it is now and put it into with Alt into a subdivision surface model using display isoparms. I have a less dense view on my topology and now I can press Q to switch between subdivided mode and the rough mode if you like. Let's just delete the... no let's not delete anything, let's just go on here. As I don't know the inner workings of this lamp, I will just fake it with another extrude. And now I need some subdivisions up here. Another extrude. Scaling without Y axis. And let's view it in a subdivided manner. And it's gotten way too big, so I will just do a ring selection on the top and bottom using UF, press down Shift, so you got it all, and now scale it in like you want. We should also scale in this element here. Make sure you have Y deselected. I'm okay with that. And now we put the round shape over it. We can start out with a polygon. Scale it in. Lift it up right underneath. Give the polygon a few segments, go to display wireframe to see them better. And now let's just see what it looks like subdivided, so drag it in there. And we see that the segments were not a good choice. So what we need is to convert the polygon, we can drag it out select the one polygon and press U shift S activate smooth subdivision and press enter now if you put this into subdivision surface it's gonna look more roundish let's go to display isoparms and just extrude the shape downwards oh no let's extrude it upwards for a second and scale the extruded polygons in a little now let's grab the ring, move it downwards, scale it up, move the bottom ring down. You can use another extrusion if you need it. And that may be roughly the shape. If you got your proportions messed up, just look at it from the side, this time using scaling in every direction at once. And just click outside here, hold down left mouse button and you can scale it. It's not perfectly round, but I don't think from a perspective no one's gonna notice. But what you're going to notice is that the subdivision only takes place on the very first object. So just choose a null and drag the objects in. I still don't like the foot piece here. So let's just choose those two rings and scale them in width.
by the way, the top and the foot, or that's called the shade rather, needs to be pulled down. And we need one more subdivision. Pull the shade up. Disable the shade for a second. And now we select all the polygons, polygon mode, rectangle selection, node selecting visible elements. Enable them the shade again and pull it up. Make it sit right on top. and adjust the shape. Call the subdivision surface object lamp table low collapse it and let's just have a look at it in conjunction the proportions could be better, so let's lift the top rings up to make them fatter. Set the subdivision to zero. And now let's add another cylinder with, a, with very small measurements. make it stick out slightly using a radius of 'Cause you want to you could set up an area light already. With low samples and a suitable shape, which is a don't we have a ring? Wow. 
well, in this case, we can just set up a torus Go to display lines, put in the torus as a light bulb, call it bulb. Yeah, I, I don't really care for details here. And give the area light an object called bulb. You have to convert it beforehand and drag it in. Let's just render it. That's what you get. Drag bulb and light in there. And we will just leave the area light in there for later use. It's really close to the surface, so we have to reduce the radius, and I turn the light off anyways. So in case you want a night scene, you can just activate it. Next, let's create the table here. For that, we disable the others, the other elements, and create a cube called table big, low, the height should be fairly minimal, maybe that's 1.6 centimeters, the width this can be, could be 80, but I choose the other direction, sorry about that, let's go to display, grow shading lines, The table has some uh, different shape on the bottom, so we should consider that. At the same time, I need beveling. So what we can do is just convert it, choose the bottom polygon, press I to go inwards, Drag the new polygon down a little. Select all the edges. Press MS for beveling. Start beveling. Render it. If you like it that way, we can keep it. And I just use a different shading just to see whether I like it or not. Put it on maybe the whole object on 18 centimeters. And please don't confuse the two coordinate managers. That's a coordinate manager and that's the Objects coordinates, we use the later one. We can create the foot out of a, well, that's the tabletop again, out of a cylinder. The cylinder should be oriented in plus set, giving a radius of 2, maybe even 2.4, and a height of 60. Let's view it from top and maybe give it 65. We don't need to see the tabletop right now, it's in the way. Disable caps. And now let's go to display, wireframe, to choose a good subdivision. 12 would result in sharp corners on the 90 degrees. We could also choose 8 to 
get the same effect, which is a good number for a subdivision model, which this is going to be. Let's view it from the right, convert it, go to point mode and choose a knife, pressing K. Disable single, restrict to selection and visible only. We don't need snapping, it snaps anyways. Hold down shift after you clicked the top. Choose the polygon selection. with not only select visible elements. That way we get this shape. Now we can lift the cylinder up, up by 12 centimeters and grab the circles. Extrude them by zero so that way we have new polygons but on the very same place. Now move them down, maybe by 10 centimeters and reduce the size in y direction to zero. Let's close the cap. Select the new N-Gons here, go I to have a good topology and now just cut restricted to selection, visible only. Just put it to single so you can do single cuts. Basically we created a cross so that we have four-sided polygons again. Now we want to have some roundish shapes, so put the table, big, low, foot, the other guy was the plate, take the low foot and put it into a subdivision surface you will see it starts or it looks weird. It does so because I already did a mistake here when I was selecting the bottom pieces. So the live selection should, should be set to only select visible elements. Choose both, pull them in and do that knife cutting again. Now we can put it into a subdivision surface, call it table, big, foot, go to display, isoparms, disable the subdivision for a second, and our main problem is that it's becoming round where we want to have some kind of corners. Choose the diagonal rings here, go to MS and drag it out. This distance defines the roundness. Let's have a look at the bottom here, maybe sharp, so let's just cut in a plane here, which is set to zero, just one cut in XZ. Same on the other side, you can basically make a ring selection, press MF for the edge cut, use one cut 
without creating n-gons. Take the points on the other side, delete them. You can now just select all polygons again, do mirror, select x, y as the plane and mirror it over. It's fusing the points in the middle, so that would be a workflow to quickly mirror stuff. Now you want to go up a little and in depth, so for that we need more detail. I would like to have cuts, two cuts for that, so let's just disable our selection for a second, press K and use the plane cutting again, but this time in vertical direction. The plane cutting is going straightly upwards, it doesn't care about the edges on the left and right if they are diagonal. So now I can activate the snapping and choose an offset maybe of 10 units. Let's have a look. I need a distance of maybe 20 centimeters from the center. And I want a spacing of three using two cuts. We probably can get rid of the other side for the time being. And now extrude the back polygons here. I expect them to be a little smaller. Maybe beforehand we just move all the polygons 30 centimeters away so we can now extrude them outwards by zero and use their relative position in Z sorry, in X to zero again. Now set the X size to zero as well and delete the polygons. Because it looks way too smooth in subdivision mode, we should also do another cut right next to where it starts. With a loop, we can adapt the shape of the neighbor. That looks more like it. There are those little pins that go up, so we would probably use a loop cut, press MF, with two subdivisions. Choose the two top polygons. Press D, leave it to zero, drag it up. Make sure you have snapping disabled. It may mess up your model. And have a look for the right proportions. I do, do, don't really do that uh, while I create this tutorial, so you can take yourself more time for that. Let's close with MD. And now we see that we A have to make a proper polygon here and no N gone, so press UE and use the loop cut to stabilize that shape. You can also pull them inwards a little.
to make it even stricter. Now we can we could care about those holes in there but I wouldn't recommend to do so at this stage. Let's choose or select all polygons and use the world to mirror stuff. X, Y will mirror it like that. Select all polygons again and now use Z, Y to mirror them like so. They should be fused right away and that's the kind of underlying structure. Let's have a look at it in conjunction. So you see it doesn't really fit right now. Probably both have to adapt to each other. Let's just see. We could select all the polygons and shrink them together in size using 140. And um, for the foot, we just delete one half, select everything but the center line drag it out and put it into a symmetry object. The symmetry object has the advantage that it's reacting flexible to that kind of movement. The table top should be raised in model mode and let's have a look at it from the side so we can make sure everything fits nicely. I think we should raise the top some more and move the points of the Make sure it's all the points, no, nothing selected in selection options and move it upwards until it kind of fits. Choose a new null object and call it table big row. And you can choose to call this table round row. Put the subdivision surface into the table. Next, you need some a kind of um, decoration. So let's just choose a disk. It should have a radius of 18. Disable everything else. Don't convert it yet. Look at it in wireframe mode. Reduce this. Choose the outer lines extrude them and move them upwards and now we can just decide um, if we need more detail maybe we want to 
give it a bit more of an interesting shape. I extrude it inwards in this case because I don't want it to go below ground. If you want, now the edges are not that sharp, you could sharpen them up using subdivisions here, but I will just leave it like that and put it into a hypernerves object. Let's look at it. And if you want to be more precise, you could try to reduce this kind of artifact, but in rendering it won't be much of a problem. If you want to know how to reduce this kind of stuff, you could just go inwards and it would be a lesser area, smaller area. You can see the difference. But in if it's all flat, then it's not much of a problem. We don't need that many subdivisions. I think we can call this plate as well and drag the subdivision in there. Copy paste the plate, call it plate flat and plate disable the flat plate and now let's just scale it upwards. For that we go to scale, use modeling axis y minus and just drag it up. Use UL and scale this border up to make the shape a little different. Probably need two subdivisions for the plates. Now what if you wanted to change the thickness? Press UF to select the inner, the inner polygons and use M. Z to make it thicker. Collapse the plates and if you need that little cylinder may have a radius of 3 and a height of Six should be placed on three. This is what it's subdivided, so we can choose sixteen, convert it. Sorry, um, choose all polygons, press UO for optimizing UL, scale it up, move it upwards to get the proper shape. Delete the polygons, extrude inwards. Choose all polygons and press UR to invert normals. We should do just the same. Now we don't have to with the plates. So now I'll call this cup. Press K with the loop cut. Choose UL and scale it outwards just slightly. Put it in subdivision early on so you can see whether we are on the right track or not. If you want the edge to be a little stricter, we should put on another cut without restricting it to selection. 
Now it's looking way better. I choose another cut and lift that one up, scale it outwards to make it a little nicer. Call it cup, put it in there. Next we can create a book. Choose a cube, make it 30 by 2 by 20. Use two segments in height, make them visible by going to wireframe mode. Convert it, press UL, drag it over. Press K, plane. No offset, spacing of 1, spacing of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 if you like, click next to the back of our book, press UL for quick selection and scale it either like this or See, yeah, we can start with something different, namely press UL, deselect this, press UI, press I, not preserving. Excuse me, preserving groups, but increasing the maximum angle. Go to point two as offset, and now extrude without caps. Drag them over, scale them apart from each other, press MS. Now choose the inner ring and scale it downwards without um, manipulating the axis. Do it again. That's your book. You can create an instance of it. Put it on top of the other one. Use scale in coordinate in its coordinates to make it smaller, offset it a little. Rotate it freehand. Well, this guy was more tidy than me. Copy paste another instance, set it to one 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 in scale again. 
don't rotate it. Move it next to the other book. And if you want to make it fatter, just use two. Call it books. We have a whole stack back here as well. So just place them in there. 